Now that we have some background on dimensional analysis and molar mass, we can combine the two in order to solve grams to moles or moles to grams using dimensional analysis. By the end of this video, you should be able to use the concept of moles, molar mass, and dimensional analysis to solve for grams or moles, vice versa, and all of that fun stuff. As a refresher, we know from dimensional analysis that we need to use the magical line to freedom format. So draw a line, equal sign, space for your answer, goal units at the end of the line, then plug in your given value as the first thing on top of your line, put in all the conversion factors till your units cancel up. Just like domino pieces for the conversion factors, you can flip them back and forth until those units cancel and you end up with your goal unit. So as I mentioned before, now that we have the molar mass as a domino piece, as a conversion factor, we can solve for moles if we're given grams, or we could solve for grams if we were given moles. So let's waddle right in and try converting grams to moles first. If we read this question, we see it's asking how many moles of magnesium are in 50 grams of magnesium ribbon. So since this is a dimensional analysis problem where we are given something and it's asking for something else, we're going to use our magical line to freedom format and draw an equal sign, leave a space for our answer, put our goal units at the end so we know where we're going. We have to have a goal to know where we're going. And then we'll take our given units and put that as the first thing on top of our line. That would be 50 grams of magnesium. Don't forget to label with the chemical as well. It's not 50 grams of gold. It's not 50 grams of buttons. It's not 50 grams of cat poop. It's 50 grams of magnesium. Be specific. Now what I mentioned before is that we can use molar mass as our domino piece, our conversion factor. Remember that molar mass includes both a mass in grams and mole. So we can write molar mass as either moles per gram or grams per mole. Either way, it's a molar mass that has both the units present. In this case, if we need a molar mass value, it would have to be the domino piece molar mass for magnesium, because that's what we're trying to solve for, moles of magnesium. That also means we need to consider how are we going to write our domino piece. Are we going to have the G on top or the G on bottom in grams per mole? We need to cancel this G, so that means that the G needs to go on the bottom of our domino piece. So our grams per mole is going to look like this, and we need some number here. We need our molar mass of magnesium. Where do you find the molar mass of magnesium? I'm so glad you asked. You need to look at your periodic table, of course. The little tiny value that's underneath magnesium on the periodic table is your molar mass of magnesium. All right, so now that I've got the periodic table behind me, let's look for magnesium. Magnesium is right here, and it has a mass of 24.305. So we're gonna plug that number in right there, 24.305. Now all we have to do is take 50 divided by 24.305. Or you could say 50 times 1 divided by 24.305. So grab your calculators and plug and chug. Our final answer is 2.057 moles of magnesium. Think you've got it? Go ahead and pause the video here to give this one a try. This one was just a little bit more tricky because I threw in the wrench of diatomic iodine. Remember that iodine never comes alone. It's always going to come in pairs. So it's I2 as its molecular formula. So when we need to calculate how many moles of iodine there are, if we have 25 grams as our given of iodine gas, we're going to draw our magical line, our equal sign, the space for our answer, and then put what our goal is, that would be moles of I2, not just I, and then put our given, the 25 grams of I2, as the first thing on the top of our line. Now we just need to find iodine on our periodic table. It is right there. And we need to take note that its molar mass isn't just the number down here. It's that number times two, because there's two iodine atoms in one molecule of iodine gas. 
So essentially what we're doing first is finding the molar mass of iodine gas, so I2. And that ends up being 126.9 times 2. Plug that into your calculator and you get 253.8 grams per one mole as our domino piece for I2, molar mass. Now we need to figure out, okay, if I plug this into my dimensional analysis setup, if I put 253.8 grams per mole in my dimensional analysis setup, do my grams cancel this way? In this sense, my grams would be multiplying, so I would end up with grams squared. That's not what our goal unit is. So plugging it in as I currently have is incorrect. We need to flip this domino piece around. So let's make sure our grams are on the bottom for our domino piece so that they cancel. 253.8 grams I2 in one mole of I2. Now we see that our goal units do end up being on top. So this is the correct setup and our grams cancel because one's on top and one's on bottom. So just like before, I have 25 times 1, because those numbers are next to each other, divided by 253.8. After plugging that into my calculator, I end up with a very small value of 0 0.098 moles of I2 in 25 grams of I2 gas. Now what if I was asking you to do the reverse? What if I said we needed 15 moles of table salt for some super saturated solution we were gonna make of salt water? How much would we have to weigh out on a scale in grams if we needed 15 moles? So in this case, we were given moles and we need to solve for grams. So same idea, but backwards. Since we're given one thing and they're asking us for something else, we know that it's dimensional analysis and we know we need to do our magical line to freedom format with our equal sign, space for our answer, and our goal units at the end. Our goal units this time are grams. Grams of what? Grams of butterfly wings? Grams of eyeballs? Grams of hair follicles? Grams of NACL. Make sure that you are diligent with your labels. This will come in handy greatly in the future for all of the other more complicated dimensional analysis setups. So we have grams of NACL as our goal units we're given 15 moles of NaCl. So that's gonna go on top as our given for 15 moles of NaCl. The other wrench I threw in here is that to get from moles to grams, I need to use my molar mass, but this happens to be a compound. There's two different atom types present. So I need to solve for the molar mass of NaCl before I can do this dimensional analysis problem. My Na is right here, my Cl is right there, so I just need to add those two values together to find the mass of the overall compound. Na's mass weighs 22.99. Chlorine's mass is 35.45. If I add those two together, that should give me the molar mass of NaCl overall. And I have a total of 58.44 grams per one mole. Again, that's now my domino piece for NaCl. I can plug this domino piece as is up here into my conversion factor spot because grams is my goal unit this time. So I can keep grams on top. Remember the goal unit always goes on top. So 58.44 grams of NaCl per one mole of NaCl. Notice now that I am writing my molecule every single time. I know this is tedious. I know that it takes a long time to write it out in all of your dimensional analysis steps on top and bottom and everywhere, but it's worth it and it will help you with your bookkeeping skills when we get to more challenging dimensional analysis problems later on. Since we have two numbers next to each other, we're just going to multiply them together and the whole thing is divided by one, so that doesn't change anything. So all we have to do is 15 times 58.44. And our final answer is 876.6 grams of table salt to make a super saturated solution. That's a lot of salt. Hopefully you understand it now, so give it a try and test yourself. Go ahead and pause the video here and try it. This question is asking about gold, because who doesn't want more gold? And it's saying, hey, we need 23 moles of gold for whatever reason, and we want to know how much we need to weigh out on a scale if we need 23 moles of gold. So we're going to draw our dimensional analysis line, our magical line to freedom, leave a space for our answer, and put our goal units at the end, which happens to be 
grams and grams of what? Again, grams of grass, grams of pet fur, grams of gold. You need to make sure that you're putting your units throughout all the time. Now we need to take our given, our 23 moles, and put that as the first thing on our line. 23 moles of earwax, 23 moles of gold. So make sure you're still labeling throughout. Now to get from moles to grams, we're always going to use our conversion factor domino of molar mass. So we need to find gold on the periodic table. And gold is right there, weighing in at 196.97 grams per one mole of gold. Now that's our little domino that we can plug in up here. Notice that we don't need to flip this domino around just as before because our grams we want on top, we want our goal units to go on top so we end up with our goal, and we want our moles to cancel with the mole that's here. So I'm just going to plug it in as it is. Alrighty then, now I can see that my moles cancel. I'm left with grams, which is in fact what I was going for. So all I have to do is 23 times 196.97 divided by 1. So my final answer after plugging that into a calculator is a very large number weighing in at 4,530.31 grams of gold on the scale. Before you leave this video, make sure you test yourself before you wreck yourself. Make sure that you can answer these two questions. How many moles of mercury are in 0.7 grams of mercury within a thermometer? And if 0.004 moles of arsenic is considered lethal, that's a real thing by the way, how many grams of arsenic is considered lethal? Now that you know how to use molar mass as a conversion factor, you can solve both of these questions with ease, going from moles to grams or grams to moles. I hope that was helpful, and if so, please give me a quacks up and subscribe to my channel for more educational content and to help other people like yourself find this content and help them too. No ducks, no glory.